The only one with secrets. How about we trade? Are you about to open shop? Trap. I know you're selling out there to pay for Davis. You need to go get a gun to protect yourself. This case came back on you. Okay, Tariq. AKA Big Reek. AKA El Rico. AKA Rico Brown. Okay, I'm done. What it is, what it do, it's your boy Cape Informer back for another hot breakdown for episode four of Power Book 2 Ghost titled The Prince. First things first, congrats on the show for already getting approved for a second season. After watching the fourth episode, I can absolutely say that Power Book 2 has definitely earned it. But per usual, this episode was stacked and was probably the best so far. However, I'm gonna have to stop y'all right quick to bring your attention to my subscribe button. I do these lovely reviews and breakdowns for the show and many others, so please don't be that one that misses out. Back to the scheduled program. Like I was saying, this episode was stacked in terms of development for a lot of the key characters and especially for Tariq. Uh, the Prince, as the episode title alludes to him being. Right out the gate, we see my man Big Reek hit the ground running by connecting with one of Simon Stern's colleagues to create an app to help him sell his product under the guise of a tutoring service called Course Correct. Now you see, this is what I've wanted to see from Tariq all along. Like I said in my last review, the kid is no thug, he's not his father, Kanan, or Tommy but he can use that to his advantage and we absolutely get to see his power plays coming into effect in this episode. We see Tariq's method become wildly successful with the help of his roommate Brayden, but this was not the only power play Reek had up his sleeve this episode. Upon observing some competition at a campus party, he manipulates a fight between a rival dealer and Brayden, knowing that this would get the kid kicked out of school just based off Brayden's family name. Hey, you didn't think I'd find out? I know what the itch should have already known that one chief <laughs> Tariq is here to play chess not checkers my boy however despite how cold we know Tariq's game is Monet had to check him just to make sure she did this by sending Drew on a little reconnaissance operation to find out exactly how Tariq was moving his product it was yet another project that she decided to leave Kane out of despite the fact that he wanted to do it but she of course turned him down for obvious reasons. Before this scene, we see Kane beat one of the GTG gang members bloody for disrespecting his mother. So we can tell just how much he seeks the approval of her. I predict that he's going to reach a breaking point with her if she keeps on treating him as just the muscle of the family. Anyways, on this little meeting with Tariq, uh, Drew finds out little to nothing about how Reek is moving his product. However, he does figure out how one of Tariq's art classmates is moving, if you catch my drift. This was kind of a surprise, but then again, kind of not a surprise. Uh, they were always painting Drew out to be kind of sweet, but now we understand why his family views him so much differently than his brother. It's obviously going to snowball into a much bigger deal because they kind of laid it on us thick this episode. Like, we get it, he's about to bone this basketball player kid. Which also brings me to believe that this may make things complicated for his cousin Zeke, uh, especially since he mentioned something about this kid Connor stealing his number, uh, the kid that also stole Zeke's position while he's on academic probation. I don't know, just something to keep our eyes on. Just like our boy King Reek is keeping his eyes on both Diana and Lauren in this episode. The last couple episodes definitely set the tone for them both. However, he makes moves with them finally in episode four. We already know Monet is in no way down with Reek getting close to anyone in the family, uh, especially Diana, who is on thin ice with her already. But Lauren seems to be that good girl that's looking for some of that bad boy energy that Tariq is exuding. Reminds you guys of anyone? They're cute though, they're cute. Uh, but can anyone tell me what the deal is between Jabari and Carrie? Better yet, why should we even care? Uh, the last two or three episodes have taken way too much time with these two and given us almost zero reason to care. What we can care about, however, is how Sax has been saxing it up these past couple episodes. His most major move this episode was him using and bribing his niece to help him spy on Tariq to help him gain an advantage on his case against his mother. She was almost too happy to oblige, and while Tariq gave her the mean curse, at that party it seemed like Brayden has taken a liking to her and the love might be mutual so guys that was episode 4 and like I said 
probably my favorite episode thus far and it paints a very hopeful outlook for the rest of this season. Things seem to be going well for Tariq and Monet's operation right now, but as we all know, things will turn for the worse sooner or later and my prediction is that Brayden will be Tariq's downfall and Drew will jeopardize Monet's plans in some way. They've definitely been foreshadowing those two to be weak links in this whole operation and it sucks because I kind of like both of those characters now. However, don't be shy and let me know your thoughts about this episode in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, give it a share, and I'll of course see you all in my next one.